When, when I was first asked to uh, be co-chair for this evening, I thought, oh gosh, this will be easy. I got, you know, Trish is my wingman. She's done it before. Be a lot of fun, pretty friendly crowd. This will be simple. And then the classic bait and switch happened about three or four weeks later when they said, oh, but we actually want you to give a speech. <laughs> and at that point, I realized I actually had a pretty tough task because when you want to give a speech, and you have to give a speech to a room that has as many accomplished people in it as this room does, it's actually quite intimidating. It's quite tough to know what to say where people could walk away feeling like they learned something. And so I decided that my best strategy uh, was just to tell a story. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit of a story. And the story really begins um, back at my time at Microsoft. Most of you know I worked at Microsoft for a little over 22 years. Uh, that was a fabulous, awesome 22 years. OK, there were a couple of meetings that weren't so awesome. And there was that kin thing that didn't turn out so well. <laughs> but there, there were, in 22 years, I had amazing opportunities. And I'm proud of the work and humbled by the fact that I was given the chance to do what I did. But there came a point, and talking with my wife and my family, where I decided that it was time to do something new. It was time to take, as we've been talking tonight, an act two in my life. And so I left Microsoft about a year ago. And I started following in some of your footsteps to figure out what I wanted to do with Act 2. So today, that means I'm doing a little bit of consulting um, on a couple of nonprofit boards that I'm very passionate about. I'm doing some advisory work. I'm doing a lot of meetings at that little Tully's in Clyde Hill where I get together for people at breakfast. Uh, I'm playing significantly more golf than I had in the past. Uh, Pete Higgins, I think, is out in the audience. He'll tell you that my wallet is significantly lighter for the fact that I have been playing golf with him. Um, and basically, you know, I've been trying to understand, OK, what's next? And thus far, the, the biggest conclusion I've reached is that one thing that will be in my act two will be giving. And so I've been thinking about what does that mean? What is giving, and, and how should I think about it? So you go and look in the dictionary. And the definition for charity is, Generous actions or donations to aid the poor. And I think charity is incredibly important. In fact, I, I look around the room. In the United States, there is no room with more people who give more to charity than in this room. In fact, you could probably make that statement on a global basis. Not something we should all be proud of. And, and certainly, you know, I, I think Pauline and I do uh, you know, our little bit to, to help with organizations that we think are important. But to me, there has to be something beyond what you would think about as charity. And so I go and look up the word philanthropy. And philanthropy says altruistic concern for human welfare and advancement. Now, that to me raises the bar a bit. And so you have to think, okay, what does it mean to be philanthropic? But I, it didn't really grab me. And so now to my story. I've been involved with the Boys and Girls Club for a little over 15 years. I started coaching basketball at the Bellevue Club. For those of you who are East Siders, you know the little sweat, sweaty gym that's really noisy and hot at the Bellevue Club. I coached my son there playing basketball in first grade. And you know, small sidelight, 15 years later, he's still playing basketball, which is pretty amazing. It's kind of scary, actually. And so I got involved in the club. That was fun. And I got involved in the local board. And then Microsoft did something amazing and decided to donate hundreds of millions of dollars of software to boys and girls clubs across the country. Through some circuitous paths, I ended up being asked to serve on the National Board of Governors for Boys and Girls Clubs of America, which I've now done for, for seven years. And at our second board meeting that I went to, is at the National Convention in Orlando. You're in a conference room. There's about 40 people on this board, so you've got one of those classic U-shaped tables. And they invited four teenagers who were former gang members and current Boys and Girls Club members to come and speak to the board. And so these four each spent about five minutes talking about their story and telling why they you know, were in a gang and what happened, and how they left, and what their life was like now. And then there was this amazing opportunity for Q&A. And one of the board members asked what I think was a good but and, and reasonable question. If you knew it was bad, why did you join the gang? And there was a 17-year-old uh, woman who had joined a gang. And she raised her hand and she said, it was the first time anybody cared about me. It was the first time I felt like I belonged. 
And to me, that was um, a really emotional event. I sitting at the table, I got up, I had to go to the back of the room and walk around for the rest of the board meeting. I couldn't sit down. It changed my view of what I was doing with Boys and Girls Club. It went from being something that was a good thing to do to being something that I needed to be passionate about. And in one of those strange twists of life, in the process of giving to Boys and Girls Club, that girl had given something back to me that was very powerful. She'd given me a purpose. She'd given me something to be emotional about, something to be engaged with, and something where I felt I could make a difference. Now, as I think about tonight and the room tonight, I still think of myself as very much a novice in the world of philanthropy. The people who are the professionals tonight in that world are the people who you're going to see honored here. They are the people who have already made the decision. They have moved to the next level. They have dedicated their life, their time, their energy to doing something very, very special. And to me, it makes me step back. It makes me pause. It makes me contemplate, gosh, you know, where do I stand on that? And I hope if you take anything away from tonight that you'll pause and have those same thoughts too. Thank you very much.